All right. So have you started running as an adult and you would like to learn how to become a better, smarter, and faster runner? Welcome to episode 148 on the Healthy Runner Podcast, where we help you get stronger, run faster, and enjoy lifelong injury-free running. Today, I am joined by someone's voice who you probably have heard before, where I've seen some of her amazing Instagram graphics. Elizabeth Scott is here, who is founder and head coach at Running Explained and host of the widely popular Running Explained podcast. Thank you so much for accepting my invite to come on the show today, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, this is really uh, fitting time-wise because as you can tell for the listeners, my apologies for the, the voice and the way it sounds. So it's great that I have another podcast host with me today so you can take care of all the heavy lifting and people can enjoy hearing your voice versus this raspy, allergic voice that I have right now. So this is good timing. So you're asking me to ramble is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. I just want you to like, just keep going. <laughs> um, guys, just to give you a brief background on who I have in front of me today, Elizabeth started Running Explained with the mission to help runners of all experiences and abilities become students of the sport and understand the how, what, and why of running. She currently holds running certifications from the RRCA, USATF, and UESCA, has coached dozens of runners one-on-one, and helped thousands of runners achieve their goals with training plans and guidance. Elizabeth's training philosophy emphasizes the importance of developing a strong aerobic capacity, creating training habits that encourage consistency, whole athlete development, including advising on strength training, mobility, nutrition, hydration, and managing life stress, and helping runners enjoy what they're doing and making running fit into their life, not the other way around. So if you guys have been listening to the Healthy Runner podcast for a while, you know we value all of these principles. That's why I needed to bring Elizabeth on the show. And that is why I asked her to come on the show. And one of the things that I was uh, messaging Elizabeth was, I've listened to her a lot. I've heard a lot of her podcast episodes, but I don't know a whole lot about really in depth in her backstory. So she agreed to have a little fun today where I've heard you mention this before on your episodes that you don't like being the center of attention. So today, especially with my voice, you are going to be the center of attention. <laughs> so I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very intentional, you know, like, it's not about me, you guys. It's about the science. It's about the sport. Um, also, I mean, because I feel like one of the most important, like, I, I do feel like sharing my story helps people relate. But I also know that I speak to such a wide range of runners in my work. And I call myself like a running coach and a running educator that you know, it's not about only wanting to attract a certain type of runner who can identify with my personal experience. Like I work with runners all ages, all abilities, all goals, ultra runners, milers, like everybody. So um, yes, there is an intentional aspect of like, I'll slip in a tidbit about me when it makes sense, but you know, I'm not about building a cult of personality by any means. <laughs> yeah. And that that's one thing that I've truly honestly respected just following your content for a couple of years now is how much, number one, the volume of content that you put out there um, and how broad it is in really helping, right? Like the everyday runners. Um, so it's been super helpful. And I do think that it is, it is nice to kind of get a little bit, kind of peek behind the curtain of who has been creating all of this wonderful content. Um, so I guess, you know, the best place to always start is kind of, you know, the running journey. And, you know, do you mind just sharing, you know, why did you start running? Um, and tell us when, when you started running. Yeah, this is a great question. This is why I ask every one of my guests on my podcast, how did you become a runner? Because I always want to know, because my journey to running, becoming a runner was, well, I, I now realize it's actually very common, but at the time when I started running, when I was 29, I thought I was like the only person who started running so late in life in her late twenties, which is you know, actually fairly young. Um, I mean, I grew up relatively active. I 
swam and I was like a, a bit of a, a polymath. Like I did theater and I did um, sports and I did well academically kind of like, you know, did fairly well at a lot of different things. I was not like a standout athlete. I think I played, I played junior varsity sports in my like class C private school in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> you have to be like if you if you show up you're automatically on junior varsity <laughs> like that's the threshold for for I know that some uh some high schools like actually making junior varsity is a big deal not the school that I went to if you showed up you were automatically on JV um and so you know I did I did okay you know I was I had fine I had good aerobic capacity from being a swimmer growing up I was fairly competitive for my age I cross country skied and I downhill skied and I played cross like soccer um and then and then in high school later in high school and then in college I discovered that I really enjoyed drinking a whole lot more than I liked exercising like a lot more like that drinking was all the only thing that I really wanted to do and yeah, what, what college so, did you go to Sorry Sorry uh, what college did you go to um, I started at Washington University in St. Louis okay, and yeah. then my, my meandering path through uh, <laughs> several years of like, I took a break um, because I was dealing with some pretty ser serious eating disorder and substance abuse issues in college. Um, it was generally suggested that I take a break and seek treatment. So I actually went to inpatient treatment for a really serious eating disorder at that time. Um, and then I kind of like, you know, meandered through some things. I actually finished my degree when I moved to Portland, Oregon and graduated from college there. Um, but, you know, for a long time, you know, especially there's like a decade in my late teens and, and mid to late 20s where when I exercised, it was sporadic at best. Um, I think the longest period of exercise, like continuous, you know, staying active that I put together, I, I bought three months of personal training lessons at a gym on a New Year's discount. And I was really, really serious for those three months. And then like, I, I just stopped going. Um, so yeah, there are all these things where like, I just was sedentary and I was drinking a lot and I was really unhappy generally speaking, but I managed to kind of keep my life together. Um, I got married, like we bought a house, like all these things. And then something, you know, I moved, um, when I was 29, we moved and, I'd been, it'd been one of those things. And if anybody who's, who has issues with alcohol or drugs or any sort of addictive compulsive behaviors, like you'll understand that, you know, you kind of get to this inflection point where you're like, if I keep doing this, it's going to get really bad or like I can stop. And so for a lot of people, especially who's dealing with, you know, drinking, it's so normalized in our culture. Um, I feel like it's becoming more acceptable to not drink, but like, I don't know about you, but like drinking is really common amongst almost every, everybody that I know. And, you know, so to have it be like, I don't have a problem. Everybody does this and be like, I think I have a problem, but like, why would I want to stop and lose all my friends? Like it's a very classic progression of like, you know, anybody who's, like I said, been through um, issues like this, but I got to this point where I was like, okay, what I'm doing, this is not normal. I feel terrible all the time. I, and I, I got to the point where I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to stop. And then I wanted to stop and I didn't know how. And then I got to the point one day where I woke up one morning out of the blue and was like, I'm done. I'm just done with this. I do not want to drink anymore. And like, that was it. And I understand that not everybody's sobriety story and recovery story is like a light switch like this. And there are people who, you know, work hard every single day to stay sober, to stay clean. And I understand that I'm lucky that I was able to have the decades of like therapy and support for my family and be in a place where I, you know, my brain could like be like, we're done. <laughs> Thank you, but we're mm -hmm. done here. Um, and so newly sober baby deer, wide eyed. I was like, I, I would like to lose some weight because after a decade of drinking, you know, you're not necessarily in the best place health wise. And I was definitely heavier than I wanted to be and was un not uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable um, in my body for a bunch of reasons. So I decided to sign up for a local 5k to start running because I realized that running cardio, great way to lose weight. Right. And that's literally, I, I almost like divide my life into two halves. And it sounds a little trite to say this, but it was like before I became a runner and after I became a runner, because it, when I started running, it was like something clicked and it sucked. Like it, it 
<laughs> becoming running is hard, right? So for anybody saying like, oh, she's telling me the story and then all of a sudden she magically like, no, my first run sucked. I was living in central Florida at the time. It was July. I was wearing cotton. I was incapable of running a mile. I don't, I don't even think I completed a full mile, including walking. Um, and, but it was something where I just I, like, I, it got a hold of me in a way that other signing up for other, you know, things and putting money where your mouth is like had never really grabbed me before. For some reason, this grabbed me. And, um, I, and I just kind of kept going. I don't know how this happened. Um, but I ended up not only running that 5k about two months later, I also to practice for my 5k, I ran a 10k race and then, five weeks after that I ran a half marathon and then like five weeks after that I ran a marathon so like I'd gone from like sedentary oh. drinking myself to death on my couch to running a marathon in six months <laughs> and for those of you and I know the physical therapist and you was like oh dear god um <laughs> yes I did I did get injured for those of you who are asking I did experience IT band syndrome shin splints they were relatively mild I had some friends who were runners who I was like texting being like what is why did the outside of my knees hurt and they're like it's IT band syndrome and I googled it and I was like oh my god cool like there's an answer for this and going through this like crash course in running in six months, like going, for, like buying books. Like I think the very first training book I ever bought was um, Hanson's marathon method. And then I bought Matt Fitzgerald's, how bad do you want it? Kind of like the two core of like an introduction to training and like an introduction to the mental side of the sport. And then I also think like, Oh, this pain on the outside of my knees, it band syndrome, all of these things that I have questions about, I think these things all have answers, you know? So it felt like I was, I, I had all of a sudden realized that instead of just trying to chart my way blindly through the jungle of this, look like with, you know, my own machete, I realized that, wow, actually this stuff all has a, like a, a, an answer behind it. And so that was really, when I think back to it, kind of the, the very first beginning of what I started doing today. I'm also the kind of person where it's like, I just, I like to know the answers to things. Like if you have a question, I will Google it. Like I, my husband calls it Elizabeth explaining. Like I like to listen to explain. <laughs> um, so I think it's also in my nature, but you know, that really understanding, you know, okay, we're not in the dark here. Um, there's also this cool, really confluence of of psychology and physiology and, you know, what it means to to push yourself. And um, I just absolutely fell in love. So, you know, and it helped that I did decently well in my times too. I, you know, I think that we talk about the aptitude of runners to be resilient and durable in running. You know, there are some people who, if they did what I did um, and went from zero to 50 miles a week in a marathon in six months, like they would probably break their legs. Um, and I don't mean that like you literally will hurt yourself. And then there are some people who would take that and say more, 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 you know, so um, a little bit of luck. A little bit of uh, of uh, I want to say misplaced confidence, but like, yeah, that's uh, how I fell backwards into becoming an endurance runner in my late twenties. <laughs> wow, there's so much there. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, and yeah, I learned uh, a lot of new things. I didn't realize how many places you lived in. Mm -hmm. um, so currently, you reside in Connecticut, I right? Do. So you are here in Connecticut. What brought you guys to Connecticut? My husband, uh, his work. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did you originally grow up in St. Louis area? No, I'm actually from Maine originally. So I'm a New England oh, girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So original New England girl went out West, was like Midwest. You've been everywhere. Florida. You've Everybody's like, surprised by that. Climate. It's so funny. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I have friends who maybe it's because when you grow up in a state like Maine, where most people leave. But, and then a lot of people end up coming back, um, you know, but it was very normal. It's like, of course you leave. Like the, you know, most people don't stay. And so, you know, to and the people I went to college with, like the people who were from St. Louis were like, oh, what do you mean you're from here? Like you, you chose to go to a school, you know? And I obviously understand that's not a lot of people, you know, live close to where they grew up and went to school in the state they grew up in. Like, that's all very normal. <laughs> I definitely grew up in a, in an environment where like, it was really common to like, go live somewhere else or move out West and then move back or move around. So even overseas, 
not yet, but I know people have wow. done it. I love it though. And yeah, thank you so much for sharing um, some of your backstory, just because I, you know, we do definitely get this um, sense when we get introduced to someone via social media, podcast or whatever, and you see all this amazing content that I spoke about that you put out there, right? And you, you hold, you know, this person, you're like, wow, this person must just like have had the perfect life, right? Things have always must have come easy to them. You know, they've just must have came out of the womb running, right? And they've just must have came out of the womb, like never having trouble in their life or or obstacles to overcome when the reality of the situation is the more people that I come in contact like yourself, you know, you see that, you know, they did come from struggle. And that's usually, you know, what is, you know, either the fire, you know, or the spark that kind of gets the fire ignited in them to either make a lifestyle change or that set them along this kind of trajectory um, towards success. And, you know, I think, you know, you sharing a little bit about, you know, some of the difficulties you had in the college days, right? And eating disorders, like so prevalent in our society um, today. Um, and then just, you know, talking about some of the struggles um, that you had with sobriety, like, thank you for sharing, honestly, because I think the more that we normalize some of this stuff, right? And, um, you know, it helps us all help one another. And I talked about, you know, on the show before some of, you know, the issues that I've had with some anxiety. And I think, you know, the more that, you know, folks like us do mention this, so people don't think that, hey, we just born into greatness, right? And, you know, have have been successful and it, it must have come easy. I'm sure that decade of your life was certainly not easy. And I'm sure this decade is not easy for different reasons, right? And we can kind of get into all of all of that. Um, but thank you so much just for sharing that. And it is just so interesting how many runners uh, fall into it, like you, you mentioned. Um, and there was so much of that that I resonated with when you were mentioning, you know, going out for that first run. And I've shared my story before of having like hip surgery and, you know, going out for my first run in a cold day here in Connecticut. Um, and it, it did suck. It was hard as hell. But from a mental standpoint, I loved being outside. And I think that's also good for listeners to know is if you're starting as a novice, as a beginner, it is going to be hard and it doesn't feel great. You don't, you know, go outside and you're like, whoa, this is amazing. And it is, it is just so good to be like reminded of that, that, you know, all of our journeys are different, um, but they definitely follow like a similar pattern I see in what I like to call the adult onset runner. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing a lot of that backstory that I quite frankly didn't know um, about. So if you don't mind, you know, I'm kind of curious here on, I know you mentioned you went to college, like what did you wind up doing for a profession after that? Like, were you working, because obviously you weren't working in the running industry like you are now. What were you, what did you do before running professionally? Um, so in school, I also credit to, um, like I said, you know, being a, a bit of a polymath and people like, did you study science in school? I'm like, yeah, I did. I also started a lot of other things. Um, I actually went to college intending to be a lawyer. <laughs> so when I like went to school, I was pre-law, like I was a political science major. Um, and so that was like my track. And then over and then I was like, well, for some, you know, I was like, well, this and I transferred and all this stuff. And then I went through all my stuff, my, my crap. And when I went back to school um, and I, I, I like in the timeline of this, I actually I finished college still actively dealing with like like alcohol issues. And of course, anybody who's been through anything like any mental health issues or, you know, it ebbs and flows. Right. So there were periods of my time where like things were a lot better and then periods of time where things were a lot worse. So I actually had gone through some stuff like deal, dealt with eating disorder stuff, went back to school. And when I went back to school, I was thinking like, I want to, I'm really interested in, in the, like the brain, right? Like, why is my brain doing this to me? Um, and so I started studying psychology and I was like, well, if I'm going to I would be a psychologist. I want to be a psychiatrist. Then I became pre-med. I took a bunch of science courses. And then I was like, I am terrible at organic chemistry. This seems like way too much work. <laughs> and I also don't want to be like a 37 year old resident, um, you know, like exaggerating a little bit, but, and I was like, okay, I'm going to switch back to psychology. So, um, 
through all of this in like my, how I made money, my first job, the summer after my senior year of high school was I worked at an, I worked at a um, clothing boutique. So my background for my, you know, how I made money was in sales and customer service. Um, so through all of this, I actually ended up working at like really high end clothing boutiques in retail. And then I transitioned into actually working in hospitality. So like at boutique hotels, um, I was a sales and marketing manager in, um, in like property management for a while. So like actually had a really good career path there. And then I was um, managing an apartment, uh, a condo, or it was an apartment building, a luxury apartment building in Portland. And one of the residents ran this mental health nonprofit and she force of personality basically said to me, this job is wasted on you. Come change the world with me. Like, let's do great things together and help, you know, and, and be a force for good. And I was like, this sounds interesting. And I didn't really like my neck, my, the, the tear upwards in the property management path in the town that I lived in, I was like, eh. I don't know. There's just, it's, I don't, I, I don't see like great, like I can see myself becoming stuck really easily. And I was like, I'm still young. I have a degree in psychology. This interests me. So I pivoted. I was in mental health nonprofits for a while. And when you work in any sort of small business, like I have basically my entire career and then going into nonprofit world, you get used to wearing basically every single hat possible. So like I, by the time I was in my mid twenties, like I knew how to do bookkeeping and put together a marketing campaign and to like hire people and to like sell people things like all these different weird skill sets that, you know, I had, which I think helps me be successful in my job today. Um, cause you have to do all those things when you run your own business. But, um, so I did that for a couple of years and then we moved, like I said, and I decided it, I just didn't, I was kind of done with that phase of my life. Um, so I went back into property management um, in Central Florida, where there are some truly unbelievable private homes to help people manage. Um, and then I went and I was like, you know what, then we moved again. And I stayed doing that for a little bit. And I was like, you know what, I, I want to do consulting. Like I kind of don't love having to be at my desk 40 hours a week. This is not something, you know, I, I want more time at that time I'd started running. Right. So I was like, I want more time to train, you know, I don't want to waste time in a commute. So I started being, I started doing consulting, um, as a, as a small business consultant. So especially for people who run small businesses, most people are not experts in every single, they're experts in like what they started their business in, but they don't know how to like run payroll or set up, you know, their website or all these types of things. So I did small business marketing there. And then literally like, fell backwards into this. Like I had been on Instagram for a while. I had my own like Instagram account for me personally. And then as I started becoming more and more of a student of the sport, started learning more about what it like, what it means to be a coach and be a runner. I started just wanting to share that with the world. So I just started this running account, running explained um, to, I thought, you know, help answer some of the most basic questions that most new and what I, you know, novice or lower information runners have like really simple stuff. Why do the outside of my knees hurt? You know, why can't I run a mile without stopping? Um, what is speed work? Like all these really, really basic things. And then it just, it just totally blew up from there. People started asking me, to coach them. And, and then I started writing training plans. And then I, I was doing like Instagram lives for Q and A's. And I was like, this would be better as a podcast. So I started a podcast and then um, eventually I was able to quit my consulting and focus full time on what I do today. So that's, that's the short, long story. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you uh, for sharing that. And how long has it been that you've been full time in running explained? Um, I actually, so there were some consulting, I would have wanted to be full-time longer. I had some consulting contract obligations that I had to fulfill. Um, but I have been like 100% in on this business basically since the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. 2022. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it's been no, like that's... 80 to 90% of my job the past, you know, two years. Right. Right. Awesome. Um, so if we can, that's great that you kind of shared like how you basically started, right? Your own business. And I think it's, it's definitely, it seems 
like a logical step that you were consulting other small businesses. So why not open your own, right? Um, with your passion and this new passion of running um, that you've fallen into, you know, so what has been, what would you say has been your biggest accomplishment as a runner? Mm. My biggest accomplishment as a runner, I'm very proud of my Boston qualifying marathon time. <laughs> That's um, fantastic. Where was that, by the way? Yeah, that was at Hartford last year. Um, oh, that was last year's yeah, Hartford. Last okay. year's Hartford, yeah. That's um, awesome. And I, I, there's a lot of things that I'm proud of as a runner. Um, I, I think one of the hardest things about being a runner and being a person is that when you ask a question like that, my mind immediately goes to all the things I haven't done yet. They're like, oh, I've done this, but that would be more impressive. Like, yeah, but I, you know, like I want to tell you all the things I want to do or think I'm capable of, right? And if if uh if I were me and and I were talking to myself as a coach, I would say, Elizabeth, you know, we'll work on those things later. I want you to be really I want you to take the win, right? Tell me what you're proud of. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so it is a, that BQ. Yeah. It, that's I mean, that's it's something I'm proud of. I think one of the things I'm proudest of is the fact that I didn't give up. Um, because, you know, there have been so many things in my life where I've gotten to the point where like, eh, good enough, move on, like hit a, hit a minor roadblock, like require me to put in anything more than the effort I had, you know, the small amount of effort I was going to do. Like, eh, good enough, like organic chemistry. I probably could have learned it. <laughs> I just did. I was like, mm, this seems a little bit hard. I'm just, eh, whatever. Maybe it's not for me. Um, you know, for running, it's like, I didn't give up, um, being able to continually push the boundaries of what I think is possible. You know, there are, there are days when I give up and it's too hard, but there are other days where I'm like, no, dig deep. You can do this. Um, and that's what I'm most proud of is I think sticking with this long enough and believe, learning how to believe in myself so that I know that the things that I am capable of, I haven't even done yet. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yes. So important, right? So important. And yeah, believing in yourself is, is, is such, you know, and just knowing that you are capable of more right? That is a huge accomplishment in of itself. Um, you know, so running isn't always all roses, right? We don't always hit um, BQs and we don't always PR. Um, and I think I really liked your kind of reflective episode on Chicago um, that you just ran. Congratulations, by the way. Um, Thank you. Yes. And, and you'll see, yeah, that I assume you're going somewhere with this because that was not one of my faster marathons. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what would you say has been, you know, one of, I don't know if it was Chicago this year, but you know, what, um, you know, has been one of your setbacks as a runner. And if it wasn't Chicago and it was a while ago, you know, what is something that you learned from it that you think can help other runners? So I've had two major I think inflection points in my running career. Um, the first one happened about like within the first year I started running, right? Obviously you go from zero to marathon and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to keep going. Like every single, uh, say most new runners out there, when I started running, it felt really, really hard, no matter how fast or slow I was going. And so I was conditioned to think that just running is hard. Um, no matter how long I'm running for. And so what happened was I was running everything too hard. If you know me, if you know any coach, um, you know the importance of spending a lot of time as an endurance athlete in that nice, slow, easy effort zone, which takes a lot of time to develop, especially when you're coming off the couch and have just very poor aerobic fitness, which I did. I had terrible aerobic fitness. I was either stopped or I was going and there was really no in between. I was either at zero as a, you know, 195 beats per minute, my heart rate, <laughs> That's, you know? Um, but so I, I, what I experienced after running my first marathon in, in January of what was this 2018, I immediately turned around and started training for a half marathon a couple months later. And then I basically just burned out big time because ever, I was training 
everything was, I was running too hard. I was firmly a gray zone, moderate, you know, moderate zone runner on all my quote unquote, easy runs. I was doing all my speed work at my wishful thinking goal paces, not my actual current pace at that. So I was, I was just revving the engine way too hot. Um, and I just straight up burned out. And so I, I took some time, like I needed, I took a couple months off and was like, uh, you know, this, this doesn't seem sustainable. And then I picked up another excellent book by Matt Fitzgerald, 80, 20 running. And that was like my conversion. That was my, you know, what, what's what they say about, uh, I was born again into the, <laughs> the importance of, you know, aerobic development, easy days, easy. And when I returned, you know, after taking a couple months where I barely ran coming back and, and basically doing run walk to develop my easy effort zone and slowing weight on my easy days from there, that was like the, oh, now I see how this is supposed to go. And I made big, big, big gains in a relatively short time just because I figured out how to train properly. Again, another kind of light bulb moment in the capacity, like all of my questions actually have answers. Let's try to figure out what those are. Um, and then I think the second, the second kind of not even a setback, but, you know, something that you said when you introduced me, um, is, you know, talking about stress management and developing runners as holistic individuals, our training does not exist in a vacuum. And so often runners don't understand the impact of the context, like what's going on in their life has on their running. And that's really happened for me in the past year, 18 months or so. Um, and the, the great irony of this is that as I have been growing my business as a running coach, the stress of that has been impacted my own training to a relatively large degree, um, which sucks. It's like, I, I want to have both and I'm trying to figure out how I can have both, but to, you know, in real time say, and realize, oh yeah, this is a huge amount of stress. And that's why I'm not able to put up the volume that I could when I was, you know, working jobs that I didn't, you know, that were less intensive, less personally, you know, important to me. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's been, that's been interesting to go through that experience, um, as a coach knowing so much about the sport now and say you, I mean, I'm just like any other runner going through a stressful period of life. Um, but I have to say, and so I feel like that really culminated with having a, a, <laughs> just a really bad day in Chicago. <laughs> um, but I also feel like I definitely have a path forward. Like, I think there's always, when we're talking about the sport, like there's always hope um, and just kind of charting the path forward. Like, I know what I need to do on many facets of my life to write the ship and to chase the performance goals. And if that means doing a little bit less in my business, like I'm okay with that because it's not about, like at the end of the day, like I need to live a life that I am proud of and happy about. Um, and so that's why I got hired coaches to be on my team because I know I can't coach everybody in the whole wide world, you know, working on ways that I can, um, you know, reach more runners that is still impactful for them, but does not mean that I'm working hundred hours a week, like those types of things. So yeah, that's all that's, I think those have been two really big, um, you know, points or experiences of growth as a runner in the past few years. Yeah. So what I heard there is, is really kind of walking that fine balance point, right? You get to a certain level. I think every runner has been there in the beginning. You make the rookie mistakes, you burn the cylinders, you know, you're in the gray zone all the time. And I hope you guys who are listening to this heard what Elizabeth said about slowing down the easy runs, right? It's the most common uh, thing that we coach all our clients, and I'm sure you do as well, and the most common mistake most runners are making. And there's so many runners who have gone on to, you know, take that next leap in their running journey and have this big growth point as a runner once they actually slow those easy runs down. So I think that was a huge, huge point that you made that I just want to reiterate, but then also the balance of life. And whether it is, you know, you have new kids, you get a new job, you have a, you know, a, a thriving small business that has grown, I'm sure, for you exponentially, right, in a small amount of time. And you're dealing with that business growth and 
dealing with the stressors of being an entrepreneur and a leader now of a team of coaches. And yeah, I've definitely felt all of those myself and can relate uh, wholeheartedly. And you're right. It does. It affects your own training and the things that we preach to our runners in terms of recovery, sleep, right? Like all the things that allow us to perform where we want to perform. Um, and I'm sure there's many runners out there who relate to that. And, um, you know, I think from, you know, there's really two, two aspects to look at, right. Is, is the performance aspect of whatever the time says on the clock and whatever time goal you have or PR goal or BQ goal, right. That you have, or is it the, I'm okay with not chasing those goals right now because running is a part of what I love and it's a part of my life. And it gives me so many mental, physical, right. Emotional benefits, uh, spiritual benefits to my life. And this is where it fits right now within the context of my life. So just kind of keeping that in perspective, because I think, you know, and, and I think you do a fantastic job on this on your show. And I, you know, try to do it on mine as well is, you know, not only highlighting the really fast runners, right. Who are doing like amazing things, um, at races and, you know, PRs and BQs and, you know, just doing highlighting other runners who are like all of us, right. Um, we're all living lives and we have whatever challenges, whether it's work, personal family, um, that we're going through and we're just using running as that medium to help us be better humans. And, you know, I think you highlighted some of those, definitely those, those difficulties and, um, more dilemmas that we face as runners. Um, so I know you mentioned about the podcast cause I'm kind of interested in this as well. And it is interesting for you to say you started it out as doing like Instagram lives and that's how I started my, my more Facebook lives, um, you know, with the pod and then turned that into the podcast. But, you know, once you started it, um, was it something that you knew hey, I'm starting this podcast and this is going to grow to be like one of the most popular running podcasts because that's what it is. And you've done that in a remarkably like fast amount of time in terms of like episodes. And, you know, I've been listening to running podcasts now for six years, seven, eight, maybe. Um, and then once I saw your show come on the scene and started listening to your episodes, I'm like, oh, this is really great content. And I love this show. Um, did you ever imagine like it would be where it is today, you know, the running explained podcast or, um, you know, is this something that you're just like, wow, like, I can't believe, you know, what we've built here. <laughs> I was actually resistant to creating a podcast for the longest time. Cause I felt like everybody had, and this was, this was a, two, a year and a half ago or two, actually two years ago. Um, really when I, when I launched the business and, and started, you know, talking about, you know, trying to explain running. Um, I was really resistant to creating a podcast because at the time I feel like everybody had a, has a podcast and I feel like everybody literally does have a podcast now. And I'm like, wow, should have started it earlier. Um, yeah, I, I, this was not at all my plan. I mean, so, you know, Instagram was kind of my medium. I'm a, I'm, I'm a millennial. Like I am firmly in the millennial camp. Like Instagram was, is, the jam for people who are roughly my age and really comfortable on the platform. And so when I started doing what I do and trying to talk about the sport, you know, it was really natural to be on Instagram. I like to make, I like to design little posts that are, you know, pithy and, and hopefully look decent. And, um, and so that was like the natural home. And so on Instagram at the time, like the, I didn't want to do a YouTube channel. I had grand designs for doing a YouTube channel. Everybody's a YouTube channel. It's so much work. You know, I, <laughs> good on you. So no YouTube channel. I was like, Facebook, but it's kind of dead. I was like, well, I'll, I like to do Q and A's. I like, I like to answer people's questions. That's, that's what I love that. That's like the origin of what I love to do. You ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. Um, and so I started doing these Instagram lives and it was like, you know, submit your questions. And then like every Wednesday I would go live. And I think the first time I did it, you know, it was like 45 minutes. And then the next week it was like an hour and then they were an hour. And then that was doing like lives that were like an hour and a half long. And I was like, this is, I don't want to, I don't want to sit in front of my phone for an hour and a half, you know, like in mirror, it was just like really awkward. And, um, I was like, and I didn't, didn't have edit control. I was like, this would probably be better to be a podcast. The other, 
this is almost like a, like just a weird confluence. One of the last Instagram lives that I did actually was on January 6th, 2021, like the insurrection at the Capitol. And I was, it was the middle of the day. I did my podcast at like, you know, or my lives at like noon. And so I sat on my floor and like did my live, I, you know, for an hour and a half and turned my phone, you know, off and turned the TV back on. It was like, Oh my God, what is happening at, and it was just like, it was just such a surreal experience that first, that, that specific day is just like etched in my brain forever. And I think I only did a couple more lives before I was like, this is going to make this into a podcast. Um, and actually the first couple episodes of my podcast, I just like ripped the audio from my lives and uploaded it to my podcast with a little like intro. Uh, and then the first couple episodes of the podcast were the exact same format question and answer. And then I started getting like requests from people and shout out to, um, Tucker gross and to Courtney Burling for being like, Hey, you have a podcast. Do you, do you want, do you need guests? (laughs) Um, (laughs) and so then I started doing, you know, like every other episode was a guest episode and then it just kind of morphed into what it is today. So yeah, it was definitely not like I set out to be like, I'm going to start a podcast. It was more like I'm doing this thing. It would make so much more sense if it was a podcast. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. No, uh, I felt the same way as well. And you know, what's, what's your biggest motivation now in continuing to kind of grow, um, you know, whether it is running explain podcast or the business itself. So for me, this is my, like my little secret as a coach, um, that being able to talk to guests that I have on the show, um, guests who are expert in their fields, guests who I just, I I like their style and I like their moves, you know, it makes me a better coach and a better runner and grows my knowledge and understanding of the sport and human behavior. So like, I love doing the podcast because you know, I know there are a lot of people, my listeners, and I love all of you, but I know that there are some people out there who've listened to every single one of my podcast episodes. And that's amazing. Um, but for me as a, as an interviewer, like I get to talk to these people, these experts and learn something every day. Like, I don't think that my thirst for knowledge is going anywhere. And that's really what motivates me because there's always something more to learn. Like, it's not just a, a catchphrase or a tagline. Um, I genuinely mean it. There is always something more to learn. Nobody knows everything. And if they say they do, they're lying to you or they don't know anything. Um, and so that's that's why I do what I do and why I keep doing it is because I know that the more I know, the less I know. And I just want to learn as much as I possibly can. Yeah, as I say, you know, lifelong learner, lifelong runner. Um, it's so true. And that is definitely the benefit of having a show that you can have experts come on is you're learning yourself. And I say, you know, that's, that's been my growth as a runner and actually staying healthy, you know, for the last literally like three years, like zero injuries is like, Hey, like I've been learning about, you know, I kind of knew the health, the physical stuff as a physical therapist, but I've been learning to all the amazing like run coaches and doctors and, you know, experts that I've had on the show and I've been implementing, right? Like I've been doing that for my own training. So it is definitely a little perk um, to get, you know, other, other people's input and to continue to learn and grow ourselves. And, you know, let's take a little break from running in the business, if you don't mind, outside of the podcast and and running. Um, what does Elizabeth Scott enjoy doing? Um, I have three dogs. And anybody's listened to my podcast has heard my dogs in the background at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I am married. Um, my husband and I, we like to eat and we like to travel and we like to go places to eat food in fun travel locations. So those are kind of the big, the big family points. We're about dogs, we're about travel, and we're about food. Um, I'm also, in case you can't tell, like a, a very much like a I can figure this out kind of person. And so I also, I like to, I like to do things like having the house that we're in right now, I've been spending time gardening and I like to do little renovation projects and the, the big project that I'm looking forward to, um, I'm actually going to attempt to gut renovate one of our half bathrooms. 
um, which has been like, a, I did this in a house we owned previously. Uh, and uh, that was a, a newer construction house. This house is not new. This house is like 60 years old. And I am very excited about what I might find behind <laughs> those walls. So yes, uh, <laughs> those are my completely non-running related interests. <laughs> nice. So some working out in the garden. Uh, yeah, my gardens have definitely taken a backseat to my time and all the other business related stuff. And I got two busy uh, teenagers, so uh, their sports and all of that. Uh, but yeah, gardening, I used to love getting out in my yard and, and spending time there. I've never renovated a bathroom. I don't think you want me to. Um, yeah, that is definitely not my strong suit. So it's good to hear that you enjoy knocking some walls down, you know, you can, you can work some power tools without like, you know, losing a finger. That's, a, that's important. <laughs> I'm pretty good with the power tools. No, this, this bathroom is going to be exciting. It's, um, uh, it has really, really ugly tile like up the walls. Um, and so it's going to probably, the whole bathroom is probably going to need to be re drywalled. So that's going to be, um, I can already tell a very frustrating and long experience. I'm excited for it. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't mind, let's talk kind of, you know, looking, looking forward, uh, a little imagination, if, um, you know, next steps for the future of running explained, you know, where do you see the podcast and the business, um, you know, going in these next five years? Oh my God. Five years. I have a five month plan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm partially joking. I mean, it definitely this past year has been, um, this is the thing that I ever tell you, you know, just try some stuff and you'll learn something. If it doesn't work out, it's fine. You know, learning the types of ways that people are different ways that people can work with me. Um, that's always I, I, this past year I've been experimenting with a lot of different kinds of group training offerings. So group coaching offerings, and that's been really interesting. And so kind of figuring out what does this look like going forward? My team of coaches, I have six coaches now. They're all amazing. We, we all, every kind of has their own niche. Um, but you know, I'm excited to when the time comes, I know that team will grow even more next year. So, Hey, if you're looking for a running coach, I got six. Um, <laughs> we are, we are a good team. Um, definitely the podcast isn't going anywhere. Um, I like the weekly format. It's a lot of work as you know, as a podcaster to, uh, pitch research, you know, get your guests, record your guests, you know, edit your episodes, publish your episodes every single week, do it all over again. Um, I'm very jealous of people who like have, um, you know, big teams and do the three hour interview style, uh, podcast episode. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with what works, um, expand my training plan offerings, keep going with the podcast, uh, reintroduce different group offerings. I'm also excited to start introducing more like little one-off courses and classes, right? So kind of in-depth learning on specific subjects. And I just debuted my first one. It's a masterclass on how to understanding and setting your heart rate zones with training. So, you know, this is a really, really common question that I get that, uh, you know, if I had an hour to counsel each runner for free in my DMS every day. You know, I just unfortunately don't. And so, you know, creating content where it's like, I get this question a lot. Um, he here's probably more information than you need, but here's an hour of me talking about this with slides and, and a running a heart rate zone calculator, like, so those types of things. Um, and yeah, I just, I mean, just, just keep going. And I'm excited too, and you understand this being in, you know, and as a medical professional, also as a, as a uh, sports um, professional, how much things continue to change as research comes out. Right. So there are things that I learned five years ago, which may have been slightly updated in terms of what we found of research recently. Um, and so, you know, kind of going, doing away with a lot of conventional wisdom and dialing in more on research backed um, reasons for why we do things. And I know there's going to be something else that comes down the pipeline in the next five years is going to like upend how we might look at certain parts of our sport. So um, I know that's coming and I'm excited for that as well. No, that's very exciting. Very exciting. I look forward to seeing some of that 
uh, come to fruition. Uh, so I'm going to hold you accountable if you don't mind. <laughs> this um, is always tough too. I will say, and you, you will of course appreciate and understand this is that, you know, when, what, what we do as, as professionals and educators in this space is that we go on the best information that we have at the time. And the research and the science does come out with new findings. It's not us changing our mind. It's science doing its job. Science is supposed to change what we know. So if five years from now, you hear me say something, you're like, yeah, but you said in 2021, I'm like, <laughs> yo, guess what? Science. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, we evolve. <laughs> we learn more. Absolutely. Yeah, we make the best recommendations based on the current evidence out there, right? And yeah, sometimes it's strong. Sometimes it's weaker, but you're presenting whatever is available at that time. So I've only done this a couple of times on the podcast, Elizabeth, but I feel like you're going to be like game for this. Are you ready for like a little spark lightning round? Yes, I love these. These are, the, these are yes. the more like fun based questions. Okay, let's do this. So on your runs, are you a, a music or a podcast listener? Oh man, I've gone through phases. It used to be hardcore music and then I was hardcore podcast and now then I was hardcore music and now I'm actually hardcore silence. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. Favorite go-to running song if you were listening to music or race playlist? My race playlist is all over the place. Thunderstruck by ACDC is always on there, though. Okay, awesome. Favorite vacation spot? You guys have traveled around a lot, but where where is like your dream vacation spot that you and your husband like to go? London. I'd live there if I could. If I were a billionaire, I'd live in London in a heartbeat. <laughs> Awesome. Any recent Netflix binge? Tried to watch Dahmer. Kind of weird. Couldn't get through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I have> um, not. <laughs> what else? Uh, I mean, I'm very excited. The Great British Baking Show is back. That's been on. And then, of okay. course, just finished House of Dragons. Really okay. well done. All right. So I'm seeing a theme here. I, I do see you running the London Marathon at some point here. <laughs> at some point. Yes. Not this year. I was rejected and I took that personally. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. No, I, I'm running Boston in April. Uh, I was going to run London instead if I'd gotten in, but not this year. All right. And is there a favorite movie that you, you, or you're like this movie every time it's on, I could watch it like a million times. My absolute favorite movie in the entire, entire world is The Mummy starring Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz. All right. All right. And you know, I own it on, are... I bought it in on DVD when it came out 24 years ago. <laughs> That's how long I've been a fan. <laughs> and, you know, since we are getting to, uh, we'll be turning the page um, into November here. Um, what is the favorite Thanksgiving food that you're looking forward to eating this year? My favorite Thanksgiving food is actually when you when you eat a fork full of mashed potatoes and peas and gravy and cranberry sauce and turkey all at once. All the things. All, all the, the flavors on one bite. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. As we kind of come down the final stretch here, the last question um, I asked all my guests, it's kind of like a misconception question. So if you can change, you know, one thing about the misconception of running, what would that be? It shouldn't be hard all the time. It might be hard sometimes, but if every single one of your runs leaves you feeling like a shell of yourself, you're running way too hard. You got to enjoy this sport. And that means slowing down for a lot of your runs. Running slower will not make you slower. Running slower will actually make you faster. Love it. Love it. Such gold, such gold there. Um, so guys, I hope you guys found this super helpful. Um, you know, in this episode, Elizabeth allowed us to kind of take a little peek behind the curtain here and talk, you know, not only running, but we talked podcast, business, run coaching, life, um, how she has a fascination with uh, living in London. And <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be many runners um, who really resonated with your message today, Elizabeth. You know, where can all of the runners out there um, find all of the amazing content um, that you put out there? Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. I don't often talk about myself, um, mostly because it's uncomfortable. It's kind of like nobody wants to hear that. But then when I do talk about myself, I've had people reach out and say, 
you know, talk to me specifically about, hey, like, I think I have a trouble with drinking. Like, what would you recommend? Or say, you know, I, I, you seem like you have all your stuff together, but I'm like, yeah, everybody looks that way on the internet. Nobody's going to present themselves as this hot mess. Um, but yes, no, thank you. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I do know what I'm doing and I know more every day. So you can find me at Running Explained on Instagram and on Facebook. And my website is runningexplained.co. The podcast is the Running Explained podcast. You can see there's a theme here. I know my branding. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I occasionally hang out on Twitter. I'm more of a, a voyeur or a lurker on Twitter. I'll retweet some stuff occasionally. Um, but yes, uh, Instagram and the podcast, which is available on all major platforms for free. That's where you'll find me. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you to the listener. Um, if you're listening to this now during your run, watching the video version of the Spark Healthy Runner YouTube channel, um, I appreciate all of you guys. So make sure you go ahead and follow Elizabeth's IG account. It's amazing. Um, such great, great, helpful information. And have a listen to the podcast because it's certainly on my kind of cue uh, in my weekly running. So as always, runners, let's maintain a strong mind, a strong body, and just keep running. Until next time.